Hey everybody, Meredith Baker here for On the Map, Off the Radar, and I am with Franklin Chang Diaz, who is actually in the Astronaut Hall of Fame as a tie for holding the record number of shuttle missions, which I believe is at seven. And he's also the president and CEO of Ad Astra Rocket Company. As some of you may know, the space shuttle retired in 2011, and now the astronauts have to go over to Russia to fly up with the cosmonauts and the Soyuz spacecraft to get to the International Space Station. So I thought it would be interesting to have a discussion with um, Franklin about the future of manned space flight and its continued importance to the human race. Thank you so much for being You're here. You're welcome. You're this is a huge honor to have you on On the Map, Off the Radar. Thank you. And I wanted to start with kind of an, a general question. A lot of people, when they argue about not giving money to um, space-related things such as NASA, they say, we have so many problems here on Earth. Yeah. Why waste money and resources exploring beyond Earth's atmosphere? And what is kind of your rebuttal to that? <laughs> well, you know, they, they, they do have a point. But um, the way I, I see it is more that, that we are we're sort of ensuring our survival in some ways. The, um, oftentimes I say that the space program really, really, really began when humans walked out of their caves. This is the first time people began to explore to see what lay beyond right. the horizon. And those who didn't do that probably died. Right. So we really are doing nothing less than ensuring the survival of our species. We, um, we live in a, uh, a single planet, and we are, um, in the words of uh, astronaut John Young, is, is, he says that we, have, um, we are a, um, a civilization or a, a race, or you know, it's a, a race with no redundancy. It means that if something happens to our planet, we are... We're done. We're history. Right. That no one can write, because um, you know we, we'll all be dis we'll, we'll all have disappeared. So um, so so space exploration is really nothing less than that. that we really are ensuring that we are able to survive. And carry that's, on that's, our that's, that's really it. So obviously, lots of problems here on Earth that we got to solve and that we cannot you know, shy away from them, but we do need to keep keep on exploring. And kind of tying into that, Ad Astra actually does stuff with alternative energy as well, so it seems that there is a great deal of so, overlap. So yeah, in a, in a practical sense, in a practical sense, a lot of the, the know-how, the technology that has been developed for space exploration has in some way sort of mm, come back to Earth and benefited Earth. Um, let's see. For example, you know, in the, on the shuttle, and this comes to the topic of re renewable energy and carbon-free energy, mm -hmm. um, in the shuttle, we uh, generated all, all of our electricity with um, the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. We used to carry oxygen and hydrogen in tanks mm -hmm. and that uh, those two were combined in a fuel cell and the fuel cell would make the electricity for the shuttle the shuttle didn't have any solar panels so we would make electricity by mixing uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen but when we did that we also made water so all of our water in the space shuttle was produced in the process of making electricity and so you could do also the reverse. You could take water, and then you can take uh, solar energy, uh, make electricity with that, and break the water into hydrogen and oxygen and store that. That's electricity. See? And then so eventually you can bring them back and make electricity. So, so that's, this is what we're doing here uh, on Earth with um, uh, hydrogen technologies that we are Im implementing in Say, for example, in Costa Rica, my home country, we're doing that now. Costa Rica doesn't have any oil, doesn't have any natural gas, so, but it has plenty of sun and plenty of wind, and so we're using those resources to make electricity and then take water, break it into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen we release, it's good for breathing, right. and the hydrogen we store as an, as an energy. 
Wow, so it clearly has very tangible benefits, the no technology. Carbon, zero carbon, so carbon free. Wow, that's amazing. Nice. Yeah, and what a, it seems like such a simple way to explain it too, that um, clearly there are these very tangible and important benefits that we can all gain from um, the things that are going on with the astronauts and cosmonauts and space flight. And looking forward, um, I know at Astra is also developing its own rocket engine. Could you explain what the hope is for that engine and some of the technology behind it. Okay, good. <clears throat> so yeah, the hope is to, to develop a, a, uh, a, a means of transportation in space that is, you know, um, a little cheaper than, than the conventional means that we have today, which is um, uh, chemical propulsion. All of the transportation that we do in space now is, it uses chemicals. It uses chemicals that combine in a rocket motor, and uh, you know the, the the combination of these chemicals produces a lot of heat, a lot of fire that comes out of the rocket, and that is what pushes the rocket along. But it uses a lot of propellant, a lot of fuel. So when you see a rocket um, in the launch pad, most of what you see is just a big fuel tank. And to give you an example, in the space shuttle, we used to fly um, to orbit, which is not that far. Right. You know, to Earth orbit is only about 400 kilometers up, up into, into the sky. Right. Um, and we would use um, half a million gallons of rocket fuel to get there. And it would be gone in um, less than nine minutes. It would be all, all gone. And so on the shuttle, most of what you saw was this gigantic fuel tank and this big, you know, solid rockets. All of that would be gone by the time we got into orbit. So a very inefficient way to travel, very, very um, uh, wasteful way of traveling. So we're developing a, a, a propulsion technology that will reduce the consumption of propellant, the fuel consumption, by um, factors of 10. So 10 times less, or may, may, maybe even 20 times less. That's incredible. So it is, it is quite uh, um, and is disruptive. And plasma rocket. Right, so, <clears throat> so uh, a rocket, uh, when, when, you, when, you, um, when you have a rocket, you have something really hot that comes out the back of the rocket. This is gases that are extremely hot, um, thousands of degrees. The hotter you make the exhaust, the better the rocket and less fuel that you consume. So you'd like to make it hotter than it is already. Problem is that if you make it hotter, then the rocket melts. Right. There's no material that can hold uh, temperatures of, uh, you know, a few thousand degrees. So we go into an, a different way and we make um, a rocket that is, uh, has no materials. It is a force field, an invisible pipe. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the gases that come out of the, uh, this pipe never touch any material walls because these gases are guided by a magnetic, a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. so, so it's as if you had a, 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 a rocket that couldn't possibly melt because it's not made out of any material. So, um, and that is what plasma rockets are. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the plasma that comes in, inside this uh, tube, this uh, magnetic pipe, is an electrical, uh, electrically charged uh, gas. And because it is electrically charged, it clings to this magnetic field and it, it does not move away from it. You see, it, uh, it is, is, is confined and so uh, so the, the, the plasma never touches any of the surrounding walls of the rocket. And that's what the plasma rocket is. It's just a, a, an invisible magnetic pipe uh, with materials, uh, with uh, gases that um, reach uh, up to uh, two to three million degrees. 
So we, we're not talking about thousands of degrees. We're not talking about Texas heat here. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about thousands of degrees. We're talking about millions of degrees. So we're making um, a plasma exhaust, which is as hot as the sun. So That's remarkable. And where do you, is, are there plans in the coming years to implement it then in one that will go out of orbit? Yeah, so, so right now the, the rocket is, is, is being tested in, in, in an environment which is like space. Obviously, we, we don't have it in space yet, mm -hmm. but so we make our own, our own environment, our own space in a, in a big chamber, which we call a vacuum chamber. And these, these are very large uh, enclosures uh, where we can simulate the conditions of space. Uh, namely, the, the, the air is being removed, and so inside this chamber there's a complete vacuum, just like in space. And so we are able to, um, to put this, this rocket inside that chamber and fire it there mm -hmm. and measure the, the performance, you know, how, how, how efficient is, it is, uh, how, uh, how much fuel does it use, uh, how hot is the fuel, the exhaust, and, and so all the things that we want to know about this, uh, this engine, uh, we, can, we can do that in our chamber here in our company. And when we're happy with it, and of course NASA is also happy with it, then we, uh, we will test it in space. And we will, uh, we will do that in order to confirm that what we measured here in our vacuum chamber happens really in space and validation of the, of the data. And then once that does happen, is the goal then for it to propel potential manned space rockets? Yeah, so now the goal then is to have this new engine which uh, allows you to now do transportation mm -hmm. of anything. Cargo, satellites, uh, supplies, people, anything that you want to transport. You can do it um, uh, a little bit more efficiently, a little cheaper. Uh, yeah. or, you can, or you can bring more stuff with the same effort that you used to before. So th th that's the goal. And um, we are you know, a co company, we are a private company that uh, we, we're in business to make some money. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we're, we're trying to make this um, uh, a, a, a revenue, a revenue generating venture and in, in the business is the business of transportation. Right. The business of trucking. You know, we're trucking things from point A to point B in space a little cheaper and a little bit more efficiently. Well, it sounds like it's certainly a big part of the future of space flight. And I also wanted to ask you what you think the future of space flight is in the coming five or ten years. Do you think perhaps, you know, man's space flight to Mars is a possibility and also kind of coming from NASA and also now um, running a private space company, what do you think the continued importance will be between the relationships of government organizations right, yeah. and privatized spaceflight? Yeah. Well, in the next uh, five to ten years, um, we're going to see not a lot of change, uh, probably just a gradual um, morphing of the space program from what it used to be, um, which is a totally government effort, mm -hmm. to more of a sort of symbiosis between the government and the private sector. Right. And so over time, I think what was going to happen is not that different from what happened in, in the in the you know 1920s and 30s when 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 commercial aviation was just beginning. At that at that, that time. Airplanes were um, mainly operated by uh, a few people who had a lot of money or a lot of resources, uh, and they were used uh, in, in, in to carry uh, the mail, for example. Mm -hmm. This was a government contract, uh, and and people like you know Charles Lindbergh, for example, used to carry mail from one city to another uh, in little planes and this is how aviation started and then you know over the years aviation became 
a very uh, efficient and safe uh, means of transporting not just the mail but also uh, people and people began to fly and today you, you know you see uh, millions of people flying at any given moment uh, in you know thousands of airplanes uh, in the air at any given moment and it's all done um, you know safely and, and reliably and cheaply and and, and privately and the government is not really that involved other than just controlling yeah. controlling the airspace making sure that people you know follow the rules and so on but but it is it is that what I think will 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 gradually happen in space as well. What an exciting future! And it is nice, and it's incredible that you're playing such a big role in the future of spaceflight and making it more efficient, cleaner, and cost effective. The goal, you know, the goal, Merit, is 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 that ultimately we uh, should all be able to fly in space. That space is not a place that only a few can go. You see, right now it is still a very exclusive club and it's not, it's not good that it stays like that. Right. Uh, space uh, has become sort of the playground of the rich countries and you know, the very powerful nations. And we wanted to, um, we want to democratize it so that anyone can go, anyone from any country. And um, that's what I, I, I want to see happen. I, I want it, I want to expand it to the developing countries um, because space technology doesn't require a country to have um, big extensions of you know, land or, or natural resources or anything like that. All it requires is the will and the, and the know-how and, and to, to, to be able to develop the technology and 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 we have um, um, in some ways uh, leveled the playing field now with the um, internet the internet has enabled lots of people to gather information right. from everywhere else and so disseminate and equalize knowledge yeah well, hopefully in the next few years, we'll be booking our commercial flights and into outer orbit, thanks yeah. to the important work you're doing here at Astra, Space. and that you yeah. played as an, um, in your incredible uh, career as an astronaut for NASA. So thank you so much for you're speaking welcome. with me. This has been On the Map, Off the Radar, and I will include more information about Franklin and at Astra Rocket Company for those of you who would like to read more. Bye. Thanks.